In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to achieve a sense of vibrant realism using alcohol markers. I'll be coloring in these bright red cherries using Copic markers, but these techniques can be used with any brand of alcohol markers to create any subject matter. Hi, I'm Tania, and I'm excited to share with you some of the many tips and techniques that I've picked up during my 10 plus years of using Copic markers, including a super easy way to create a sense of realistic shading in your alcohol marker art. Let's begin. I'm going to start by coloring in the highlights on the left cherry. I'm coloring from light to dark on this cherry, and for the right cherry, I'll be doing the opposite and coloring from dark to light. That way, you can get a sense for what it's like to color both ways, and decide for yourself which way you prefer. To create smooth, seamless blends with alcohol markers that mimic the sense of natural lighting and shading on an object, you'll need a range of colors. In this case, for these cherries, I'm using five reds that range from a very light red to a rather dark red and three transition colors in between. You can see the exact colors that I'm using in my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers, where I demonstrate in real time how to color in these cherries. The entire lesson is over 70 minutes long, divided into seven videos in which I explain everything that I'm doing and why, so that you can take these techniques and apply them to different artworks. Principal line art is included, so you can follow along with me. You can watch my techniques from different angles, so it's like you're in the room with me, looking right over my shoulder. I'll post the link to my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers below this video. Now I'm adding more vivid, saturated reds to this cherry, and then blending it in with my lighter colors, smoothing it all out as I go along. It's important to keep these blends smooth, because the surface of the cherry itself is quite smooth, and we want it to look realistic. Next, I use a darker red in the top center part of the cherry. Notice how adding this darker color really starts to give this cherry a sense of form and dimension. It's quite a contrast to the brighter highlights. At first, the darker red almost looks too dark, but once we blend it in, it looks surprisingly natural. After adding the darker red, I continue to use my lighter colors to smooth out the transitions between the colors, softening hard edges as I go. Blending alcohol markers is always easier if you're using alcohol marker paper. So for this artwork, I'm using Expressit Blending Card, which is a wonderful paper to work on. Now I use a darker red, which I only use sparingly. I outline the cherry, and then I continue to use my previous colors to blend everything together and create a nice smooth gradation of color. The challenge of coloring in these cherries realistically with alcohol markers is that cherries are really smooth as well as reflective, so you want to take the time to really emphasize those characteristics to make the cherries look as believable as possible. So the benefit of coloring from light to dark is that you can always go darker if you need to, and that's what I've done here with this cherry. This allowed me to experiment with how dark I wanted to go in different areas. The downside is that it can take longer and use more ink than if you color from dark to light, as I'm demonstrating now in the right cherry. I'm starting by coloring in all the dark areas of this cherry. Since I already colored in the other cherry, and I want these cherries to look similar, I have a visual guide that I can follow as I color this cherry from dark to light. Having a visual guide like this helps make it easier to color from dark to light so that I don't accidentally overdo it and make it too dark too soon. So now I'm adding in my vivid saturated reds and blending them in to the darker red, smoothing everything out as I go along. I gradually work my way up to the lightest reds for the highlights. One thing to keep in mind when you color from dark to light is to make sure you leave enough space for your highlights. By now I've mostly finished coloring in this cherry, so at this point I'm just going back in and adjusting some of the values by making the center a bit darker. And then I use my lighter reds to smooth out the colors to make the transitions look more gradual and natural. Now let's color in the leaf. I'm going to use an underpainting technique to color in the leaf and stems. Underpainting is an artistic technique that's been around for centuries and can be used with a variety of different media. When you employ an underpainting technique with alcohol markers, it can allow you to create a beautiful sense of realism. Let me show you how. Underpainting basically involves putting down a base layer of color to map out your highlights and shadows. You're essentially laying down the object's values, how light or dark it is, and where. Gray is a common color used in underpainting, though any color can be used depending on what you're coloring in and how you want it to look. 
I'm using grays to map out the leaf's values, using a darker gray for the darkest areas and using a lighter gray to blend towards the white of the paper. Then I go over the underpainting with my greens and yellow greens. Alcohol markers are transparent, so when you go over gray areas like this with color, some of that gray will show through and create a sense of shading that looks really naturalistic. This is why underpainting is a really handy technique to use if you want to create realistic art with alcohol markers. It's easy and the results speak for themselves. You just have to remember not to use any grays in the places where you want the highlights to be or in any places where you want there to be vivid color. Now let's color in the stem. I'll start by creating an underpainting again. You'll notice that I rotate the paper as needed so that my hand is in the best position for creating the long curved brush strokes. The stems are long and thin, so it's important to be careful when coloring them in. I apply green and yellow green colors on top of the underpainting. And then I work on the little brown area at the top, just above where the two stems connect. We're almost done with these cherries. You actually could call it done if you wanted to at this stage, but let's create a soft shadow underneath these cherries. The shadow will help make these cherries look like actual 3D objects that are sitting on top of a white table. You might automatically reach for your gray markers when you want to color in a shadow, but shadows are actually more dynamic when you incorporate other colors. In fact, I'm only using one gray color for these shadows underneath the cherries. The other colors I'm blending into it are from three other Copic color families. I'm using four earth colors, one red, and one red violet. I start with my lightest color and map out the outer edges of the shadow. Then I use the colorless blender to blend it into the white of the paper to create a soft edge. I continue adding darker and darker colors, blending after each application to smooth it out. Notice that the closer the shadow gets to the bottoms of the cherries, the darker the shadow gets. This is called an occlusion shadow, where no light reaches. It's little details like this that helps it look like the cherries are actually sitting on top of a table. After creating the shadow, I sit back and assess how it looks and do some final adjustments as needed. Now it's time to add some final touches using colored pencils and paint pens. This part is optional, but using extra media like this can really help tie the artwork together by adding details or texture, as well as adding brighter highlights or deepening shadows. You can also use colored pencils to smooth out any gradations that look a bit wonky. After using colored pencils, I use a white Posca paint pen to add little dots in the existing highlights. These dots are called specular highlights. Now I move on to the leaf, where I use a white colored pencil to create subtle highlights, a green colored pencil to create subtle shadows, and a yellow colored pencil to smooth things out and add more warmth to the leaf. All of this helps to further define the shape and texture of the leaf. I'm using the colored pencils to emphasize the veins on the leaf, which are quite thin. They're so thin that it would be really hard to do this kind of detailed work using just alcohol markers. So this is a perfect example of how colored pencils can work so well on top of alcohol markers. With that done, I decide to do one last touch up on the shadows, I guess because I'm a perfectionist. Honestly, when it comes to art, if you're a perfectionist like me, you can just keep fiddling with it forever, but at some point, you've just got to call it done. So there you go, here's our finished artwork. I hope you enjoyed this time lapse. If you did, it would mean a lot to me if you tapped the like button, because that lets me know that you enjoy this kind of content. If you have any suggestions for what you'd like me to demonstrate next, please let me know in the comments below. I look forward to hearing your suggestions. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my art videos. If you'd like to learn in much more detail how to color in these cherries, check out my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers, which I've linked to below this video. You can also watch two more time lapses from my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers right here on YouTube. So check those out and I'll see you next time.